Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to tune in for our Sunday School lesson for today. We're beginning a new quarter in the adult Bible study, and this quarter has to do with salvation, spiritually speaking, and you'll hear that uh, addressed in several different ways over the next coming weeks. Just a reminder that uh, as we began this study, which is found in Luke, Luke's writing of the book of Acts, uh, we're going to consider Paul's conversion, which is a very important uh, piece of the early church experience. Just to remind you that um, Acts tells the story of the beginning of the church after the uh, resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Uh, then you read about Pentecost in Acts 2 and the beginnings, uh, the growth of the church. Then you get to chapter 7 and you begin to pick up some difficulties that that early church Christian movement had with the Jewish faith. And you read about the tragedy of the death of Stephen. And for the first time, you'll hear at the beginning of chapter 8 the mention of a man by the name of Saul, who by standing by gave his consent to the death of this first martyr. But our lesson comes from chapter 9, which is the story of Saul's conversion. By the way, just to remind you, he is Saul in Acts. That's his Jewish, his Hebrew name. And in all of his letters, he's referred to, of course, as Paul, which would be his Roman name. Paul, uniquely a Roman citizen, but a very highly educated Pharisee supporter ardently of the Jewish faith. This is the story as you read it. This is in the New International Version from the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any of these who belonged to the way, that's an early name for the Christian movement. If he found any that belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As Saul neared Damascus on the journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand into Damascus, and for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. You can continue reading that story and you'll hear about the man called Ananias who was a disciple living in Damascus, and by a vision he was instructed to go find this man Saul, and he does so. And you pick that up in verse 17 of the ninth chapter of Acts. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, 
He regained, <clears throat> he regained his strength. The word of God for the people of God. As I read in the adult Bible study, I was a little taken back when I saw the emphasis that the writer placed on this very important passage of scripture because he saw as the purpose of this lesson to consider the anger that motivated Paul, Saul in the beginning. Here's how he says it from our study book. The purpose statement of this lesson is to let go of anger that blocks our spiritual growth and wrecks our relationship in the church. To let go of the anger. Anger is a topic that uh, is very prevalent with us today in our society and with all that's going on. I wrote this little tidbit for myself as I tried to put in words what anger is. It is a natural human emotion that can dominate a human life so as to ruin or to motivate change and healing. Anger has good, anger has bad. It can cause great hurt and pain. It can lead to action that can have positive results. As we read, Paul was an angry young man. In that first verse, you heard this. Saul was still spewing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. The immediate question for me was why was Saul so angry? In my opinion, it was because he saw this Christian movement as a threat to his dearly beloved Jewish faith. Raised and educated as a Pharisee, Paul saw this Christian movement as heresy. It didn't follow the Jewish way, maintaining the law, keeping the ceremonial requirements to be uh, a Jew. Uh, it threatened him greatly, and he responded with that anger and, and even got permission to arrest people who were following in this Jewish way. Uh, anger fueled his passion. Anger led to cruelty and hurt in this example. So then my question to me, what about my anger? Do I even recognize it? And if so, what does it do for me? And I turn that question then back to you and ask you, what about your anger? Certainly so many things that we see and read about today can trigger emotion and feelings within us. I just mentioned these few for us, uh, beginning with politics, of course. My goodness, do you hear the emotions as these political figures on the right and the left both spill to us what they believe. And I can hear the anger, the mistrust that's behind so much of what we hear and read about. Uh, what about the pandemic itself? What about this illness that has interrupted and disturbed our whole way of living? Uh, are you tired of it? Uh, does it trigger some emotion in you when you see people who seemingly don't pay attention to what the medical people advise us? They go about being together in masses and, and perhaps causing additional problems. Does it stir something within you? What about the protesters, protesters you see in the streets? What does that do for you? Do you even understand why they're doing what they're doing? 
not to speak of the rioters, the looters. What does that do for you? And then to turn those feelings a little more personally, what does it do to you when you see those lines of cars for blocks and blocks of people who are waiting for food distribution? People who are hungry in today's America, this land of plenty, people hungry, people without work, looking day to day how to survive. What about the subject of injustice, of fairness, of equality that we believe in as Americans? And on and on we could go. I could even talk about sports and getting riled up about my team not getting to play, perhaps. That's a whole different subject. Point being, all of these things cause emotional responses within us, and, and we need to be aware and, and to push that to say, what does it mean for me? How am I going to handle these feelings? Because I know this, uncontrolled anger leads to great hurt and, and pain. I know that unresolved anger that some of us may cherish within us can lead to depression and guilt. I know that misdirected anger can interrupt friendships. Then we should mention and believe in righteous anger, where we see a particular problem and we are moved to respond out of our, our emotion when we see a need we need to have righteous anger that's based on truth and love. Now, those of you who know me know, of course, I'm not a psychologist. I'm certainly not a psychiatrist, but I'm a retired minister with 62 years of ministry in my past. I've seen an awful lot of anger that has led to hurt and disruption in families and in communities and even in churches and it's very painful to see i have seen that anger that is channeled in a positive way that moves people to action and and helps situations at times to be resolved so again, back to your anger, my anger, the question remains, what am I doing about it? How am I using it? Am I sitting? We've got a lot of time to sit. Or is it helping me to be moved to action? Again, example, what can you do? Politic-wise, the least we can do, I suggest, is to vote for sure, to be supportive of the candidate of, of your choice. Uh, the pandemic, what can you do? What can I do? Well, I can be a responsible person to, to check myself and to follow the guidelines that are proposed to help us move through this tragic event. Protesters in the street, what can I do? I can try to understand What's the motivation behind this? Is there something I need to know that I don't consider that they do consider as very important? The rioters, the looters, uh, I can support the authorities who are assigned the task of managing that and be supportive of them. What about the human situation and those people and the lions who are so hungry? Can you buy someone some food? Can you support some movement or organization that does buy food and helps to feed people in these difficult days? What about injustice? 
what can you do? You can think about what equality means. You can think about what fairness is and what is right and what is wrong. I don't have the answers, but I have committed it to my mind and my heart to think it through and to try to understand. I do know that anger produces energy. It certainly did in Saul's case. And I want us as Christians and followers of Jesus to be people who use our energy to do good, to support what is right and true. I want our emotions to support us to love the unlovely, to feed those who are hungry, to clothe those who are naked, to visit those who are sick and in prison. Saul was an angry young man when he had an experience with Jesus. Changed his life and ultimately changed the life of that early Christian movement. Helped to change the world because his anger was changed into love. As I thought this through, I searched the scriptures to find examples of Jesus and his anger. Was he? You remember, of course, the experience when he went to the temple and found the money changers and he turned over the tables uh, this is a house of prayer, and you've turned it into a den of thieves, he said, um, using his anger for something, a point to make. I also read some of Jesus' words when he uh, exchanged feelings with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious people of his day some very pointed and shared words, I believe, shared out of the emotions in Jesus' heart. But then I came across this story, and this is what I'll leave you with. It's found in the Gospel of Mark in the third chapter. The story is this. Jesus goes into the synagogue on the Sabbath and he's confronted by a man with a withered hand. We don't know what that means. It could be arthritic type problem. And he notices, Jesus notices that the Pharisees, the Sadducees are watching him, which they did consistently as he traveled. They wanted to try to catch him in some fault and hold it against Jesus. So Jesus asked that man with the withered hand to stand and he pointed to the Pharisees and Sadducees and said, what is the right thing? To heal or not heal on the Sabbath? Of course, it's against the Jewish law to do any work. Even healing is against the law. If you follow it strictly in the Jewish faith. The Pharisees, the Sadducees did not respond to Jesus when he asked them. Jesus touched the man and healed him. And then you read this poignant verse, fifth verse, third chapter of Mark. And Jesus looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. Anger, because he saw people's hardness of heart. He saw people who had no compassion for this man and his problem. Anger from Jesus, seeing people without compassion. Again, all those things I mentioned going on today, in the midst of our anger as we respond, 
Is there room in our hearts and in our minds for compassion, for understanding, for love? I pray that we will be moved by our emotion to be available to, to be involved with those who have needs that are all about us. Let us have a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the story of Scripture that can enlighten us and teach us. If we have open minds and hearts to listen and to hear, give us patience in this day and time, O oh God. Give us understanding when we see so many needs about us. Forgive us our angry feelings that are harbored within us but help us to channel that anger, those emotions into actions that can help us to reach out in love to a nation that is hurting, to calm the angry feelings, to be people of hope for the future. Help us to remember Jesus, the man of peace, the man who did see and respond when he saw people in need. May his spirit guide us in this time and in this place. I pray in his name. Amen.